Hey everyone, the name is Eric, and if you search online, you'll notice there is a bunch of tests out there that believe they can measure and test your cognitive function. So they believe they can predict how your mind works and which cognitive function preferences that you have and that are the strongest within you. However, most of these tests seem not to work. So really, the question is, what's going on here? Why is there no functional cognitive function test? Why do these tests seem to disagree with or go against Carl Jung's theories? Why do these results make so little sense? When you take a classic MBTI online cognitive function test, what you end up with is often a very scattered result. And often a result that has little connection to your personality type. The question is, how could it go so wrong? How can I as an ENFP test so high for introverted intuition? Or how can I as an INFJ test so strongly for introverted feeling? How is this possible? What is happening? What's going on? The problem with a lot of these tests is they are trying to do something the wrong way. They are making a classic mistake in trying to operationalize Carl Jung's theories. Now Carl Jung has a theory that we all have a series of eight functions and John Beebe he later took these theories and he theorized that these theories they fall in a certain hierarchy or stack. So there is a dominant, an auxiliary, a tertiary, an inferior. A first function, a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and finally an eighth function that we barely use or barely have any conscious consciousness off inside ourselves. So the theory is if we build a cognitive function test we'll be able to prove this hierarchy. We'll be able to prove that I as an INFJ will have introverted intuition, then extroverted feeling, then introverted thinking, then extroverted sensing, then extroverted intuition, then introverted feeling. And finally, lastly, I will have introverted sensing as my weakest, least conscious function in my stack. So this is the idea and this is what the test seeks to do, but often it fails terribly. The test fails terribly because it fails to realize that Jung's theory was never about a stack at all. It was never about the arranging or organizing functions based on preference or degree of consciousness. Jung's theories were about trying to describe a husband to a wife or a wife to a husband. It was about trying to figure out the basic most dominant, most conscious thinking patterns inside a person and everything else was kind of left to speculation. We couldn't really speculate or form anything conclusive about the so-called shadow functions. We couldn't clearly distinguish or know their relationship or how they worked. The theory we have been working with slavishly, BB's theory and interpretation might not be correct. So the cognitive function tests they might be proving this very thing. They might be proving the problem with BB. They might be highlighting that, yeah, these theories might not make sense. Most people might not fit in this pigeonhole of cognitive functions. There might be INFPs that fall outside of this. There might be, as Dave Superpowers argues, an INTJ jumper that has introverted intuition and introverted feeling as their highest. And there might be an ENTP out there with extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling as their highest. So what this does is it creates room for additional interpretation and variation inside personality types. And what it does is it suggests that we've been going about things all wrong. This theory from the 80s is not necessarily been correct. Perhaps we've been mislaid. Perhaps uh, we've been tricked. Perhaps we've been fooled. When I was building a cognitive function test, I kept running into the same data. I kept having this theory in my mind of how I wanted a test to work and how I wanted people to test. I wanted and expected people to follow this classic pyramid. I wanted the INFPs to get the introverted feeling highest. And then I wanted them to get extroverted intuition secondly. Then I wanted them to get introverted second in sensing as their third function. I wanted them to follow this theory. I wanted people to act predictably, but they did not. The data didn't match. The data didn't make any sense. So I had to adjust. I had to sh look at the data and I had to form a new theory. What is really going on here? What I saw was there was predictable patterns to type and cognitive function usage. What I noticed was INFPs came to test high for a series of two cognitive functions, introverted feeling and introverted intuition. 
I saw that ENTJs tended to test highly for two functions, extroverted thinking and extroverted intuition. I saw that ENTPs equally came to test high for two functions, extroverted intuition, but also extroverted thinking. So what I saw was this was the data that people were giving me. These was how people felt that they experienced and thought and processed information based on my understanding of Young's functions. When I gave them a simple strongly agree or strongly disagree test where they had to ask or answer how they felt about different cognitive functions, this was what they thought. So what I did was I realized a problem, a fundamental issue with cognitive function tests. The idea is that we have certain functions that have a dominant role in our psyche and some that have an auxiliary. But the test doesn't test for that. The test doesn't test for how an INFP experiences extroverted intuition. No, it tests for how any single person who is taking this test at this moment is experiencing introverted intuition. It doesn't test for auxiliary introverted intuition. It doesn't test for tertiary introverted intuition. It tests for introverted intuition, point, end, that's it. So this uh, creates a problem. There is no dynamicity of the personality test. There is a standardization and a standardization that doesn't work, a standardization that is flawed. So we can only reasonably predict one or two cognitive functions based on this approach. All the rest are going to be a whir of confusion. They're going to fall up and down and there's going to be some contradictions and there's going to be some weird answers because how does an INFP feel about extroverted thinking? Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe strongly agree, maybe strongly disagree. Ah, pff, depends on the day, it depends on the mood, it depends on the time. Most people, they don't have a strong preference or a strong clear feeling about most cognitive functions. Most people only have a strong feeling about one or two of them, and that's completely fine. So what I did built my test to do was to measure if and what cognitive functions they had the strongest preference for. And then I focused purely on that. And I thought, this is fine. This is all I need a test to do. I don't need a test to tell a person what their inferior function is. Because if I do, I have to build a test with 640 questions. One for every possible experience or thought process a person could have about one cognitive function. And I could not possibly put all this data together to make and give an accurate read about every single experience a person might be having. It's impossible to predict down to the smallest level every single thought or process a person has and every single possible nuance in experience a person might have of a certain cognitive function. But it is possible to make a test that has and gives some insight into some cognitive functions and some common experiences of this cognitive function. And that's enough, that's all you need to do. And however, most function tests, they don't do this, they fail to do this, and that's why they are, frankly, terrible. Stay away from them and don't put too much uh, stress on the results and don't uh, fret too much if you don't fit in the norm. Most people don't. And most cognitive function tests don't work. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.